Hello and welcome to Structured Change. Today we're going to take a look at the context of the organization. ISO 55001 for Asset Management determines that the context of the organization should consider the issues, both internal and external, that have bearing upon the delivery of value to stakeholders. Now, when we take a look at that from a change journey perspective, it gives us alternate lenses to consider in stakeholders. Traditionally, a stakeholder map or heat map would look at people who support a change, what their objectives are, and even those that are resistant to change. When you actually consider the context of the organizations, you're adding in the themes, internal, external, political, um, economical, market-driven, and by understanding those themes and cross currents that sit in and amongst your stakeholder groups, you actually understand the tensions that exist within an organization. Take that a step further, you establish the context of your risk management universe, if you like, and you've got some areas of consideration to link, i.e. the strategy of the organization down to the implementation of change. So let's take a look at this next presentation and you'll see how easy it is to determine the context of the organization, plus how easy it is to convert it to a diagram to play it back to your sponsor. Let's take a look. It's very important to understand an organization of where it sits in the market, why it sits in the market, a bit about its heritage is important, and also understanding the functions, both internal and external issues and concerns, but also to internal and external opportunities from a change perspective is equally important. On here, you can see this is the definition from ISO straight from the book, the organization shall determine the external and internal issues that are relevant to its purpose and that affect its ability to achieve the intended outcomes of the asset management system. The asset management objectives included in the strategic asset management plan or the SAMP shall be aligned to and consistent with organizational objectives. Okay, so that's again a bit of a dry read. So let's just take a look at the next slide. So in the similar presentation on structuredchange.tv and we looked at stakeholders, here's a simple way of articulating what the context of the organization looks like in a single slide. So again, if you look at um, these different tensions that exist, we'll also go through the exercise and on identifying what's an internal factor and what's an in external and what's an internal factor. So in terms of the context, we've got the average age of the worker is greater than 48 years old. You might be thinking that's old, but you also need to consider what does that mean in terms of knowledge transfer. There's no standard shift hours, internal, changing ERP system, and that was driven from the head office overseas, external, raw material supply threatened, external, sell price under global pressure, external factor, Outsource maintenance, well, we'll have that both as internal and external because one drives the other. Increased competition, external. Three unions and two enterprise agreements, well, that's internal. Disparate planning, that's internal. Deteriorating assets, so the whole system itself is really old and decrepit, that's an internal one. Harsh chemical environment, that's a factor that's internal. The previous owners didn't reinvest, external, and now owned by a foreign company, so external. So if we then take a look at it, we can see that when we go around the page, there's probably more internal factors here than there are external. So from a change perspective, what we're suggesting is there's probably more you can do about it from within than actually having to concern yourself too much with the external. So. Whilst that produces an opportunity for change, it also demonstrates that there's a concern underlying here because we've actually let it get this far. One would like to think in a lot of organisations um, it could be more neutralised, which then demonstrates the leadership and alignment that an organisation actually has. So from a change management perspective, what does it mean? Well, it provides us a blueprint for risk um, management but I also say it provides us also a blueprint for opportunities as well. 
we understand the levers um, that are play bearing that come from the market, but also outward from the organization's own capacity and capability. It serves as a checklist for journey plans, and that's another series of videos on structurechange.tv, and enables playback to stakeholders throughout the journey that we are ensuring that everyone remembers why the journey was important at the beginning. All too often you'll set out with a change roadmap to get to a certain point in time and what seems like only a quarter or half a year later people are changing or trying to influence where things are going. Well if you play back the context of the organization, you play back the actual stakeholder needs and wants of the organization, you remind people that in most of the time those things are still relevant and what they're actually trying to change the course of a journey is really down to something that is very much immediate in nature and not so strategic. And then again if you're modeling an organization and we'll talk about this on structurechange.tv it gives you a great ability to bring together all these themes and actually create little programs or initiatives that address each of them and you end up with a nice program layer sitting between your organizational strategy and operations that act as the glue to bringing it all together and sustaining it into the future. So again, this brief video was just to describe what the context of the organization is, but also to how important it is to leverage it in terms of your change leadership and change management. Thank you, and please look out for more videos on structuredchange.tv.